Hey, what is up guys? My name is Stan and in this video, I'm gonna be taking a look at the EK Quantum Kinetic Pump Res Combo I've got right here. This is the VTX version of this Pump Res Combo. Uh, that means it's gonna be compatible with DDC pumps as well as EK's own VTX pump. In fact, this came with its own uh, VTX pump. And also we're gonna be taking a look at the EK Uni pump bracket. This is the 140 millimeter version of it. So we're gonna be installing these together in the little mini ITX build that I'm working on right now. All right, first up, this is again, the EK Quantum Kinetic. This is the small version. Um, I can't remember exactly how big it is, but uh, EK has a couple versions. There's like a small, very, very small version. And there's like a, um, I think it's like a 200 millimeter, 160 millimeter. Again, I'm, I'm making up numbers at this point, but this is the small one. So this should be coming in at under 140 millimeters. I think it's like 137 or something like that. This is also the Plexi version. So if I can get this thing open in here, what we got is this is the whole pump unit. This pump combo has been sold out for a very long time on EK's website and all its distributors. In fact, it, it, it's like the first time it was in stock for three or four months. And I think it was primarily because of the lack of VTX pumps. Um, VTX pumps, if you're not aware, is physically almost the same as a DDC pump. Uh, mechanically, they're very similar, but uh, this is EK's kind of version of the DDC pump. And what makes this pump unique is that it runs at a lower minimum RPM, so it allows you to turn down a little bit more. Uh, I think DDC pumps minimum is like 20% power, while this uh, bottoms out at like 11%. So we're gonna be taking a look at that and how much noise uh, this thing makes on the low end. This being the Plexi version, so you got the Plexi pump top, you've got a Plexi uh, reservoir, and also you've got a handful of accessories. So let's take a look at the actual accessories here. This right here, this is, uh, this has gotta be a, like a fill, fill port, um, or not so much a fill port, but a top inlet, um, little tube to put inside. You get the EK tool. This is a plastic EK tool to help you screw everything in. And this basically is how uh, this reservoir looks. Now, inside this reservoir, you've got a bunch of RGB LEDs and you do have an addressable LED strip with, um, with, with cable. So this is gonna be the three pin LED. This, you connect this to your motherboard header so that it lights up and being all acrylic and everything. So this is, a, this is or sorry, Plexi. This is Plexi, this is Plexi, this is Plexi. So it's gonna glow like a Christmas tree. Now in terms of flow paths here, what you've got is two inlets and one outlet. Uh, being Plexi, you can see exactly where the inlets and outlets are and where they connect to. So the pump has one outlet right here and an inlet that goes into the reservoir, another inlet on the other side that also goes into the reservoir chamber. And of course you got three connections at the very top. And if you are, you want, you can use one of these tubes here to help you channel water into from the top. So uh, you got a lot of options, but really only one outlet. Now also the uh, the cables are sleeved, which is finally, you know, finally, final, final, finally, EK started sleeving their pumps here. So uh, you've got some flexible-ish sleeving. It, it's, it's, it will certainly do the job. It's not super premium, but you know, it's okay. Um, and the sleeve here goes almost all the way back to the pump itself. So it's not too bad. Um, the pump is powered by a single Molex with a two pin connector inside. And this right here, this is the PWM. There are two pins inside here. So uh, you're gonna be able to tell what the RPM is and control the pump with this cable. So you're gonna go into the BIOS or a fan controller and control that. And then inside here, it's gonna take the full 12 volts, but inside here, it's gonna be able to change the RPM based off of that. On the bottom here, 
You've got uh, four little stands for this DDC pump uh, to, to rest on. There is a little bit of a rubberized bottom to help with vibrations, so that's gonna be nice. And with that, we can take a look at the pump bracket, where how I'm planning on mounting this. So this is the kit, and I take this out. There are both 120 millimeters and 140 millimeter versions of this. This is basically just stand steel uh, painted in black. And you can see here, this is both compatible with DDC pumps as well as uh, D5 pumps. And you got the different holes and whatnot. So uh, if, if I, well, for the sake of showing you guys here, you got four holes on the bottom and it basically this is what it's gonna look like with this attached to a fan and the pump sitting basically right there uh, with your openings and outlets here or rotated or whatever. Um, and you have your mounting stuff. So what I wanna do here is get this mounted right here. And then what we'll have is essentially the pump sitting mounted to the front radiator somewhere like this. All right, just kidding. I actually rotated this upside down. Uh, normally you can mount it, you know, sitting up right side up like this, but just because there's a little bit of an offset between where the holes are and where the base is, it actually, I think it actually fits better in my case if the reservoir sits a little lower. So that's why I'm gonna be mounting it to the bottom, bottom fan and then I'm gonna have it sitting upside down like this. Uh, right side up, upside down, it really doesn't matter. Uh, it's all the same, it's just four holes for where you can mount the pump. So we'll take a look at how this sits inside the case. What I'm gonna be doing here, as I was trying to say, was I'm gonna be mounting it to the bottom fan. And uh, with it mounted on the bottom here, you can see that the top of the reservoir sits just underneath, uh, just below the top of this uh, radiator. Before, if I had it up, right side up and mounted up here, then the reservoir would be sitting like up here, but now that I've rotated it, so it's just slightly lower, so it looks just a little bit better. So one thing to note that I, the screw that I'm using here, this is actually Alpha Cool screws. The EK screws are um, that come with the kit are a screw and a nut, and these are actually too big to fit inside these Alpha Cool radiator screw holes. Uh, all I'm doing here is using the screws that came with the radiator and putting the washer, the plastic washer on it. All right, so I've got the pump mounted to the radiator here. This is a 280 millimeter radiator. Again, the 140 millimeter bracket. Uh, this is turned upside down. So we've got it sitting a little bit lower in the case right now. Now also we've got the two inlets or outlet inlet and then you got another inlet on the side here. So you could choose to come in from this side or this side here. Only one outlet though. Uh, also, what we have here is the cap. If you, you can screw off the cap, and again, we've got three connections. We've got three connections here. So as you can see, this screws up halfway, and on the other half, you can screw in the fitting. And if you do that, then what you end up with is a dip tube for the inlet. Now I'm not think I don't think I'm going to be using this. I think I'm going to be coming in from this side and then exiting from this side to kind of get the symmetrical look rather than coming in from the top here. So I'm going to be replacing this, putting this back on as it originally came. The last thing I want to mention is the size of this unit. This this is the 120 version of the VTX, so it's rated for about 120 millimeters overall height, and indeed from the very bottom to the top here, the 120, 130, 140 millimeters. Uh, overall height is right around 140 millimeters. So 
If you've got, let's say, a 140 millimeter fan, that's just about the height of this entire unit. Uh, there is also a 160 millimeter version. So if you have like a 240 millimeter or 280 millimeter radio, if you mount it on the bottom, the 160 version is gonna be like somewhere, somewhere here. So uh, depending on the size you need, you can go with the 120 or the 160. Or if you end up not liking whatever height that they come with, you can actually get the X3 res uh, cylinder and replace the cylinder with whatever height you want. They, they come in all different sizes of heights you can actually purchase from EK directly. Uh, and you can go even taller if you need. So again, this is uh, the reason why you go DDC or VTX is because of the small footprint. This being a mini ITX build, I probably could have crammed a D5 pump in here, but I wanted to go small just so that I had a little bit more space to have the cables come from below and into the mini ITX motherboard area. So uh, that's kind of why I went with that. I usually don't go DDC just because of noise. Unfortunately, I don't have the motherboard or CPU. Uh, Comet Lake S is not out yet, so I can't power this thing on. So I can't show you guys the RGB, nor can I show you guys the, uh, the noise level from this VTX pump. Once I get this build up and running completely with the new components here, we'll take a look at that. So if you wanna see that, make sure to subscribe uh, and keep an eye out for the rest of this build. So yeah, this was just a quick little look at the pump res combo in this mini ITX build. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button and perhaps down below, tell me what kind of res pump combos are you looking at? Are you looking at this? Are you looking at the D5? Or are you looking at com something completely different? I wanna see what you guys are coming up with. Anyway, my name is Stan. I'll see you guys in the next one.